Hello and welcome to the 34th video in this series, Programming HS Engine in JavaScript. In this video we're going to sidestep from the make move and write a checkboard function. Now, I put in when I was preparing for some of these videos some time ago a, ch a small checkboard function for myself to check the hash key or position key and, a and I found it at the bottom of this video when I was preparing for this one in board.js and I'm not sure whether it's already been implemented in the series before or not, so if it has, sorry about that, but delete it if it has. It was right at the bottom of board.js if it's in your code. And this checkboard function is a very simple function. It's simply going to check that the pieces uh, exist on the gameboard.pieces array where the piece list says they does, they do, that the material is okay, and that the position key is okay, and the side is okay. And the reason for doing this is, is whilst we set up our, when we set up our position inside our parse fen here, and we reset our board, and set our side and things here, and then we call the update list material, which is here, and here we go through the whole board and increment our piece numbers and our material indexes here. Whilst we do that here, it's different when we do our make move. Now we've added in our add remove and move add clear and move piece functions. Those do what's called incremental. So for example, in terms of the material, we don't each time we've made a move loop through the entire board and set the material again. We simply remove the material value of the captured piece and a piece that's been added to the board, we then add the material value of that. And the same is for the position key. We have a position key function which we call at the end of the parse fen here called generate pos key but it's quite slow calling this function to scroll through to loop through every piece on the board and generate the hash key from that and you've already seen in the last couple of videos inside our move piece add and clear piece we call these hash piece functions from the bottom of defs here and so effectively we are incrementally updating the status of our key so the point of this checkboard function it's because errors are very easy to make, as I'm sure you can appreciate by now when writing these programs. We're going to write a function which just checks everything is as it should be. And the function itself is pretty easy, so it's going to be a copy and paste job this video. And I'm going to talk through it, and I'd recommend, to be honest, that you probably just download the code. It's the easiest way of doing things for this. It won't be a, a type alongside what I'm doing. So the function is called checkboard. And the first thing I'm doing inside the function, I'll just scroll this all up a bit now, is this array here is going to be a mirror of the gameboard.piecenum array. And this T material array here of two is going to be a mirror of the gameboard.material. So we're going to fill now this piecenum and material array and then at the end make sure that each value in these arrays matches the values in the corresponding arrays in the gameboard. What we're also going to do is add in some variables which you'll need for the rest of the function which you'll see them being used I won't explain them now and the first thing the function is going to do is check probably the most likely area for errors and that is the piece lists so I'll paste the whole thing in now and talk through how it works so we loop through each piece type starting at a white pawn and then we loop through each of those pieces that should be really familiar now how this loop works and then what we do is we get the square from the game board's piece list for that particular piece and its corresponding number. And of course, if we say for a white pawn, got the square of the first white pawn, it's on A2, then our game board pieces array should also contain a white pawn on A2. So we get the square A2 out here, and then we say, OK, if on our pieces array we don't have the same piece type, then we'll return a false and we'll put to the console that there's a piece list error. So this is simply cross-checking that what is on our pieces array in our game board is exactly the same as what's in, for each piece type, our piece list. The next check we do is we'll check our piece number counter and our material counter. So I'm using the square 120 here just to shorten the loop slightly, just for the 64 game squares. And again, it's simple stuff. For each square on the 64 game squares, we take the piece on the game board, we increment our temporary piece number array at that piece index by 1, and then for that piece colour, we increment the material value. 
And once we've filled those arrays, we can now actually check that the numbers match up. So the first one we'll then check is the pieces. So we loop from white pawn again to black king and check that our temporary piece number array for that piece type is exactly the same value as the game board piece num because if it isn't then there's an error somewhere in this piece num array we'll print that to the console and return a false so I'm sure you can appreciate now how valuable it is to have a function like this especially when you're producing or writing the code for the first time it's absolutely essential because it's very very easy to make errors in particular I found with JavaScript which doesn't do any checking until you're actually running and uh, the code and calling the function and that's thrown me out as you've seen already in the series a few times. So the next one's a very simple. It's a check of the material scores. I'll just move this down to a lower line. So making sure that for white and black, the temporary material array score adds up with the game board material. We do exactly the same thing then for the side and we do the same thing also for the hash key. So again, we check that the side is either white or black, because if it's not, then we're in big trouble. And we check that if we freshly generate our hash key, that it's the same as the current incrementally altered hash key. Otherwise, again, we write to the console error. But if everything's OK up to this point in our function, then we can return a true and be fairly satisfied that the integrity of all the information in our board, game board structure is OK. So inside main.js then, I've added the checkboard onto the end here, but I haven't actually run this yet. I did earlier with some preparation, including the last couple of videos, but I'm just going to double check everything's still OK. So I'm just going to go to the browser and refresh here. And indeed, at the bottom of the browser here, there is no error spat out by the checkboard function so I can assume safely that everything's all right. Okay then, so that's it then for this video, short but sweet, and next video we'll start writing the make move function itself. So thanks very much for watching, comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.